Hey, do you have one of these Elgato devices and want to use it to capture this kind of consoles? Then this video is for you. While there are some options when it comes to capturing analog formats like composite and component directly, this tutorial assumes you already have something like an Elgato HD60 and are familiar with using it in conjunction with OBS already. The model I have been using is the X Plus external model, but I assume it, it works similarly with comparable models. So, if you owned any of these consoles growing up and were like most people, chances are you are already using one of the most standard form of audiovisual output of this era. I am talking about composite here, characterized by the three cables, a yellow jack for video and two jacks for stereo audio, one right, one red. Now, the first thing we need to do is to make sure we can make this connect to this HDMI port on the card. If you search on Amazon for composite to HDMI adapters, you're probably going to find very similar small devices like these. This is the one I got for around 10 euros. Then connect the HDMI output into your Elgato's input. Okay, so we're here at my uh, OBS setup. My uh, my Elgato is connected to the to the computer, but it's not. Uh, getting any image because as of right now my composite to hdmi converter isn't plugged into power so i do this by uh, by plugging the usb into the usb port on the pc like so. Uh, so it's okay so show the image at the at the at first try sometimes you're not gonna get an image uh, immediately so what you gotta do on this uh, in this situation you just gotta go to the pro to the Elgato properties and uh, start changing a bit the, the the values on these drop downs on the color range video format. They just change them once and then go back to default. Usually that's enough to just to, to just wake up the capture card and make it uh, sync to the to the converter. So what you're gonna what you're gonna get from that converter, as I, I've told, it's uh, usually a, a 1080p image. There's a switch that's that can make it output for 720p if for whatever reason you you need that and it's also a 60 uh, 60 hertz output um, so this is going to be the same whether you're using a pal console or an or an ntsc console uh, so this makes it a very straightforward solution to work with uh, and as i remove the key here the this, the save the pause menu. This is what you're gonna look at. This is Zone of the. This is a PAL version of Zone of the Enders for the PS2, running on the the actual PS2. As you can see, the image is uh, pretty uh, pretty stretched. So what you gotta do, you can uh, you can just go here on Transform, Edit Transform. As you can see, it's by default, it's gonna give you a usual 16 by 9 1080p image. You can just change. Assuming you already have the 1080p, 1080 height, you can uh, you can just change it at this, 10, uh, 1440. That's gonna make it a 4x3 image, or you can just look up a different size that's still a 4x3 image, and then there you you have uh, you have your Elgato transferring uh, a composite image to your scene. So. This isn't the best image you can get. I'll show you later about uh, how you can do component. But this is uh, going to be the most straightforward solution for, for most people. While there are some more options in terms of outputs you might be inclined to try, like S-Video and SCART, the usual and all be all solution in terms of getting the highest quality image from retro consoles are component cables. You can distinguish them from composite through the five cables they are, well, composed of. The usual two for audio and then three that give out the video signal, divided between colors and something. The important thing is that the jump in image quality is enormous and in my opinion well worth the investment if you're streaming. You can get component cables for most consoles, though most of the time you are going to have to go with third-party manufacturers since official ones tend to be either non-existent in the market and or too expensive. This is the one I got for the PS2. Now, to convert this to an HDMI, 
you're going to need a different kind of box, like this one. And while component to HPDMI boxes might scale your signal just like the previously talked about device, some, like this one I got, will just pass through the original image in the original resolution, which will most likely be in interlaced format. Explaining what this is is a bit out of scope for, of, for this video, but suffice to say, it's a format wherein each frame is presented in halves, which was the standard in the CRT era, while nowadays everything uses progressive formats, which display an entire frame at a time. The process of converting interlaced video into progressive video so it can show up in a modern display is called deinterlacing and receiving an interlaced signal from your box means you are going to have to deinterlace it yourself. Okay, so now I have uh, connected the, the components to HDMI box uh, I have and uh, you can uh, already see that the image that is produced already has a, a different size to it. So what, what's happening here is that now the resolution we're getting out of the, out of the Elgato as a as this kind of resolution 720 by 7 uh, by 576 sorry uh, which is the pal resolution uh, the pal resolution number so if you have an, uh, an american game it's gonna be a bit different it's something by by 480 the famous 480p and this means this footage is also uh, running at 60 frames so this is this is look this is uh, it's showing up as 25, but which uh, which admittedly got me confused at first. But it's actually uh, exactly what it's supposed to to show because this is an interlaced uh, Im image feed. You, you kind of just have to to take it as it is. It, so it says 25. So we can uh, we can sc scale it to a to a bigger uh, to a bigger size. And, it, and you can already notice it's uh, it's way better quality than what we had with the other image. Now, uh, some things you need to have in consideration when using a, a more direct image from the from your console is that first, since this is an interlaced uh, image, you're gonna need to use one of these uh, one of these options in the deinterlacing context menu. So. Uh, you can play around with them a bit to see what uh, what looks best for for you, but uh, usually the best one for three D games is Yadif to X. And uh, I have heard that though I have heard that Retro is uh, better for two uh, D games for basically more uh, for more ancient consoles, maybe the NES or something. But yeah. You get a, so you get a much more uh, clear image out of, out of this than from the composite uh, image, but it does require you to take some uh, some more steps to make it right. Another important note for European console users is that since this is this is a game running at 50 frames, for some reason it's gonna look weird if you're outputting your. Uh, your stream or your or the file you're uh, you're recording into at uh, 60 frames. So what I recommend is when you get your uh, your output, your, uh, your when you get when you configure your output here on the video tab on OBS, uh, you should change your uh, your frame rate to 50. It's uh, completely fine if if you do that. Twitch and the YouTube allow the, allow it. And so, uh, I don't know if it's if it, if it's noticeable on the video itself, but the the gameplay just looks much more smooth like this because now the now the frame rate from the game matches up with the frame rate on the OBS. Now, as a quick note, some games such as Tekken 5 on the PS2 do feature a native progressive image mode. Make sure to always look up your options for the game you intend to capture. They might save you some trouble and give you an, a better image. A similar tip can be told to my fellow Europeans playing PAL versions. Some of them might have an NTSC mode, which features full 60fps output and is closer to the to original developer intent. 
If you were already on the lookout for ways to connect old consoles to HDMI, you might have come across these. I messed around for a bit with one of these retro things, the 2X multi-format, and while it was good at passing through both composite and component, it was also a bit overkill for what I want. You see, the main function of these devices is to do line doubling. While modern TVs might accept a 1480i resolution from a PS2 or a GameCube, it might not accept a 240i signal from, say, a Super Nintendo. What the RetroThink 2X does is doubling that resolution into a more accepted one for modern devices, so unless you want to capture those kinds of consoles, you might not necessarily need to drop the entire price for a RetroThink. The more recent 5X Pro does seem to have many more features intended for 6th generation consoles though including scaling all the way up to 1440p and a motion adaptive with the interlacing. All of that for $300. So while I believe it might give you very good results, it is the type of investment not to be done in a rush. I need to also mention the OSSC, or the Open Source Scan Converter, which is cheaper and probably more available, but I don't have any experience with it, but might be an option, something closer to the RetroTwink that doesn't break the bank in the same way. So well, here I have laid out my methods for capturing analog hero consoles, which I have used on my channel. Hope this will help anyone hoping to do the same. And if you like PS2 era games, I do some streams on them, so check out my channel if you will. This has been Kubo and I'm launching up.